Hello everyone and welcome to the channel or if you aren't new, welcome back. Today I want to talk about how, two things, how I got my internship at Google when I was in college and also some tips about how if you're looking to get an internship at Google, which if you clicked on this video, I'm guessing the vast majority of you are, some tips as to how you can get an internship at Google. It is very much, I know, something that is looked at as like, oh my gosh, an internship at Google, but it is something that's very attainable. Uh, it is difficult, but you know, hard work and dedication can absolutely pay off. And if it's something you're interested in, it's absolutely something that is within the realm of possibility for almost everyone that works, you know, very hard at this and, and is persistent. The, that being said, there are some specific things you can do to get your chances to go up quite a bit, actually. So I'm gonna structure this video into two parts. The first part is going to be me talking about how I got my internship, and then the second part is gonna be the specific tips or what I did, I think, differently when I finally got the interview my third time applying that I didn't do the first two times that really helped me out. When I first was trying to get into Google, I, as I just mentioned, I applied three whole times. The first time was my first year in college. I might've actually applied four, I forget. But the first time was my first year in college and I was looking for internships, applied to Google, never heard back, never heard anything, never got an interview, and that was it. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty sad, although to be honest, that's probably the experience most people get their first time applying, or at least if they're a first year that doesn't have much experience. I, I did have plenty of project experience, but I didn't have any internships or anything like that. My second year, I was a sophomore and I applied again. This time I got, I waited a while, but I got an interview and I passed all the initial interviews and actually got to project matching, matching stage. And if you have ever, or if you don't know about the Google sort of internship, I guess, interview experience, there's two stages. The first stage is all the interviews and the normal stuff. And then secondly, if you pass the interviews and you're qualified, well, then you go into project matching stage, which is where project managers or intern project managers can see your profile in a system and choose to interview you or not. And if you get matched with a project for one of these projects, so if there's a good like fit, then you get the offer. Otherwise, it's just, uh, you know, too bad, try again next year. And unfortunately, that is exactly what happened to me. I never heard back from a single project. And even though I passed all the interviews, I just, I, I didn't get a fit, which was really unfortunate. My third year though, I applied the first day the application was open. I, within just a week or two, finished all the interviews, passed them all, and talked to four, three or four, maybe even five different project managers and got a really good match, a really cool project. So how did I do it? What did I do differently my third year that I think led me to get this? There were a few things. The first thing that I just mentioned actually was applying quickly. Google does a I forget what it's called. It's like a rotating system sort of as they come. So as people apply, they keep evaluating people and accepting people. They don't accept everyone after they've evaluated everyone. They just keep accepting people. And once all the slots are filled up, they're all filled up. And that means if you're an early mover or you, you know, submit your application on the first day, they're going to see it first. And you're going to get in that system first before it gets backed up with all these people. And I used to procrastinate so bad on these sorts of things because it'd be like, oh, I have to make a cover letter. Oh, it has to be perfect. Oh, this, I should have italicized this one word in my resume. And I kept uh, going over all these things and it led me to be like several weeks or sometimes even months late to submit my application. And in hindsight, that was really stupid of me. And this is something I always advocate for now when people ask me for advice as to how to get a job or internship, especially with these internships that do rolling admits, that's what it's called rolling admits. You wanna get in there ASAP. It's okay if your application's not perfect. Spend a day, make it as good as you can. And if you, it's not perfect by the end of the day, so be it. Submit it, it's perfectly fine. You just want to get in there as early as possible so your application goes to the top of the list. And because I submitted so early, I got a call back within just a day or two, which is crazy. Previously, I'd waited weeks to get an interview with Google, right? But this time I was at the top of the list. I passed all my interviews, I think in one or two weeks, and I was already the project matching stage by you know week two or three, which is, as far as I was aware, pretty much unheard of because you know there's only so many people that apply as soon as the application comes out. Most people are busy. They either see it late or they're working on a thing. So if you are trying to get a, you know, an internship at Google, bookmark that page, make a calendar note for yourself the day before the application comes out that says, make sure my application is ready to submit the hour that application comes out. And I guarantee you that will do wonders to get you the interview because getting the interview is one of the hardest parts, in my opinion at least, of getting an internship. The easier part should be passing the interview, which I know that might sound controversial, but let me explain myself. Getting an interview is very hard to control. 
the pretty much two things you can do is make sure you have a good resume and make sure you submit your application early. There's not really much you can do other than that. Other, you know, than of course persistence and having experience and stuff, which I'll get into, but that's, that's all long term stuff, right? You can't do anything short term to really improve your chances other than some very minor things. Whereas with passing interviews, you can practice for so long. And I highly, highly, highly recommend, if you've never heard of it, Leak Code is a great site for practicing interview questions. If you are trying to get an internship at Google or one of these top tech companies, you should absolutely be practicing Leak Code. It depends on the company as to what level of difficulty questions or like what level of di difficulty their average questions are. At Google, it can range quite a bit. I've gotten everything from an easy Leak Code question to a hard Leak Code question. But what I would recommend is you should get comfortable with passing all the medium lead code questions. That doesn't mean you have to do all of them, but you should get to the point where anytime you see a medium, you should be able to think for maybe up to five minutes, come up with a solution that can do fairly well. It doesn't have to be the best solution. What's really important is being able to talk about your solution and point out where it might not be great or where you do think it is strong. Obviously getting the perfect solution is the best, but if you can't, that's okay you should be able to do it sometimes. But it, essentially all I'm trying to say here is the long-winded version of, you should be able to do these medium questions fairly quickly and fairly efficiently with a fairly good solution, even if it's not perfect, although you should hopefully get perfect sometimes. If you're comfortable with leak code, as I mentioned, being able to explain your thought process is also very important when you get into these in interviews. There were, when I did my interviews, I remember there were actually, I had two code questions. One of them I did very well. And the other one I did fairly well too, but neither of them I actually got, I didn't get to the last question on either of them because the way they're usually structured is they'll ask one question, once you solve it, they'll ask a follow-up and they usually have two or three follow-ups. They usually don't expect you to get to the end, but if you do, it's very impressive. I don't think I got to the end on either of them if I remember correctly, but what I did do was I, I solved one or two steps of each one of them and I gave very good answers and explanations for why I was doing what I was doing. And even when I came up with a non-optimal solution, I acknowledged that and, and realized that and pointed out to the sort of person that was interviewing me saying, I know this part isn't perfect, but this is what I'm thinking of for now, so let's code this and then we can come back to it. So if you can do something like that, it really helps. And to practice that, I highly recommend whiteboarding with a friend. There are websites for this too, where you do these whiteboard interviews, you know, you write the code on a whiteboard and then you sort of evaluate each other. If you can do something like that, I highly recommend it. It is very helpful, especially if you're not naturally good at speaking. I wasn't until I started, you know, practicing speaking, which I, I've done a lot at this point and it's helped me tremendously. So those are sorts of all the things you can do, I guess maybe a month to two months before you are doing, you know, applying for one of these positions where you can practice Lee code, you can get your resume up to date, all these things. Those are things you can do in the short to medium term. There are things you should also be doing in the long term though. One of the things that was different when I applied in my junior year of college was that I had contracted for a machine learning, a place that was doing machine learning for eight months before I actually applied, which was you know tremendously helpful, I'm, I'm sure, because they saw my resume and they probably saw, oh, this person has experience. They know what they're doing. They can work at this place, so they probably have a fair amount of experience. And that's one of the ways you can get noticed beyond just applying early. This is something you have to do or work on in the long term though, right? One thing I often hear is that it's very hard for a first year or a second year to get an internship because all the internships require other internship experience and you have this sort of catch 21 going on where if you don't have an internship, you can never get an internship, but how are you supposed to get the first internship? And it's very complicated. So what I would recommend here is if you haven't had any luck getting an internship in your first few years of college, look through startups and look through websites like AngelList, these places where people are just starting up really young companies that need you to do, it doesn't have to be machine learning, but whatever you're interested in, maybe it's security, maybe it's web dev and offer to work for free if that's what it takes to get it on your resume. But make sure it's something that is within the field you wanna do so that it sticks up on your resume as something that distinguishes you. It is very much worth it, but it's also something that takes dedication and, and long-term planning, right? You can't do this two months before you apply and then put a two months long thing on your resume. They're just gonna look at it and be like, okay, this, is, this seems like a half-assed sort of thing. That's not what you want. You want to commit to something and make sure you're learning from that. Um, and, and that you're getting a lot out of it and that you can also then put it on your resume to make you stand out. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, you should like and subscribe, but the other thing I mentioned <laughs> at the beginning of this video is that these Google internships are something that I think 
a lot of people see as daunting, that lots of people see as unattainable. But if you really work hard at it, and the key above all is, is if you persist and you're, if you're very persistent and always working on these things, it will pay off and it is something that is attainable in the long run. For me, as I said, it took me three, four tries to get this internship. And that persistence was something that was very instrumental. I think another thing that impacted me getting the internship my third try was the fact that I had already passed a previous round and that I had persisted through, you know, they, they can see how many times you've applied, how you did in the past interviews. If they can see you're clearly working on your skills and improving, that's gonna go a long way to getting you the internship. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say for this. It is attainable. It is also very difficult, but I wish everyone that is, you know, working for one of these things the best of luck. And I hope to catch you in another one of my videos. Do make sure to like and subscribe if you like this kind of content. I do lots of stuff like this, but thank you for watching.